Welcome back to another Q&A. We curated some of your guys' questions on YouTube, and we're gonna answer them here for you. If you have a question that you wanna ask, definitely comment them down below, and maybe you'll be on one of the future Q&As. The first Q&A that we got is from a 79B Tonelli. They're saying, I have a Go EFI 600 that I purchased back in 2018, installed it on a GM 250 cubic inch inline six engine. He's having difficulty tuning the vehicle, especially at an idle, and is saying, do I need a software update for this system or should I be able to set it up? So this is kind of a two questions in one. First, I'll say, Software updates are not necessarily gonna fix any kind of tuning setups. Most of our software updates were bug updates. So some of the earlier systems were really susceptible to like a low voltage. So some of the early softwares corrected that. One of the most recent softwares fixed a bug in the data logging. So it really didn't have anything to do with some of the settings that you have in the system. But we do over time add more features in the handheld that allow you to adjust more things. A prime example of that is ethanol content input that you can now just plug in instead of trying to trick the system by increasing the cubic inch by a percentage. Um, so for that answer, no, you don't need a software update. My thought on that is if you're gonna be doing a brand new installation uh, with a system onto like a new engine, just update the software so you're with the newest one or if you're not really technical savvy, don't worry about it. It's really not that important. What I'll bring up with this issue though, is the 250 cubic inch inline six engine, which inline six engines tend to be a little bit more tricky to get them to do idling and acceleration. And all of that comes down to the intake manifold itself. Uh, to put one of these four barrel intakes or one of the four barrel throttle bodies on a inline 250 engine, you're generally gonna be running an aftermarket intake. A lot of these intakes are flat and drawn out. So fuel doesn't easily travel down and across it. Um, that big flat space, fuel will just sit in it and it slowly works its way across. So with that in mind, with us injecting fuel into the engine, we have to be a little more exaggerated with the amount of fuel that we're giving the engine to get the engine to respond. So at an idle, I'm curious to know if it's having an idle issue on a cold engine versus a hot engine. Um, you're probably gonna have to try to target a richer air fuel ratio. And then on the acceleration side of it, which I'm sure you're having issues too, you're gonna have to go in and you gotta increase your, your Excel pump and your fast Excel pump. Um, in these cases too, sometimes you have to go into the pro tuning section. There's a hidden menu um, under display setup that you can turn on pro tuning. That allows you to turn on the DK for Excel and fast Excel. So think of Excel pump and fast Excel as amount of fuel and decay as time of fuel. So you can kind of play with both of those to give a big shot of fuel to the engine to get that initial response that you want. So again, big flat intakes generally need more fuel initially to get fuel running to the engine to get an acceleration to happen. Our next question is from NSTY underscore 6.2, and it says, could you explain rev cut offset settings in the Phytech system? The rev cut offset settings are particularly in the LS systems, and what this is, is a temperature dependent rev limit. So you'll notice that the section will have a bunch of different temperature ranges. And what that number means is a reduction to the rev limit. So in the initial section, the initial setup section, you may put your rev limit at, let's just say 6,800. Now, if you got an engine that's a hundred degrees, you don't want to have it rev up all the way to 6,800 RPM this setting you can turn down. So if the engine's at 100 degrees, if you put, let's say, a value of um, 1800 in there, that will lower your rev limit 
1800 RPM. So instead of 6800 RPM, you limited it to 5000 RPM. So that's kind of the way that that setting works. And it's just a way to lower your rev limit dependent on the temperature of the engine. <clears throat> Next up is from Wayne Walsh 470 says, does the ECU have to be grounded? I have a no spark situation going on and have the complete EFI harness with trans control. Um, I'm assuming that he's referring again to an LS system. Uh, the short answer to this is no, the ECU does not need to be grounded. But a no spark issue, I always like to check cranking uh, voltage first. Not necessarily cranking voltage to the battery connection. If you had low voltage there, the handheld would shut off during cranking. Uh, that's pretty telltale of what the issue is there. But more importantly, the key wire. The way that the system works is it runs the key wire to the main relay, and then the main relay across to a fuse that then goes to the ECU to turn it on. So if you check the red fuse on the fuse panel on the LS systems during cranking, it's the closest you can get to the ECU of knowing what your cranking voltage on the key wire is. If you notice that just dropping just under 10 volts, the computer's just partially shutting off. If it's more exaggerated, you would have the whole system shutting off, but more than likely that's all the issue is. Um, in super rare situations, if you were using a kill switch on and off, on and off, on and off a bunch of times, you can potentially get what I like to say, uh, get lucky, you played the lottery and you won. Uh, you can shut the power off to the ECU while the system's trying to save, and it can corrupt the software. If that was the case, you can just ju jump into the right Cal to ECU section and rewrite a default file and it should fix the issue. Um, that's not very likely, but every now and again, I see people use it. Again, if you have a kill switch, explore that. If not, it probably doesn't apply. Um, Last one that we have is David Biddy 1411 saying, I am about ready to fire up my 72 Charger 512 Phytech six pack. Is there anything I need to watch out for? Um, six pack systems are really cool, um, but they are a little more tricky to set up initially with setting the IAC steps. Uh, I like the thoughts of hearing that this isn't a stock engine. One of the big things that I always think of when I hear about some sort of a Mopar is what kind of ignition is being used. Most of the time, a stroked board engine, is, you're gonna be running some sort of aftermarket ignition, so I'm not so worried. But just to throw it out there, the factory Mopar electronic ignition runs a ballast resistor, which means it will not work with the EFI system. Um, you can sometimes work around it a little bit by saving the distributor and running a CDI box with that distributor, but you can't retain the factory Mopar ignition. Uh, that just will not work with the EFI system. It causes RPM noise, which is just a ton of drivability issues. Um, assuming you're not running into any of that though, the next one would be setting the IAC steps when starting the engine. Uh, with the six pack you have Three throttle bodies, I think it's a really an advantage to have a flow meter. You can get little ITB flow meters that show CFM coming through through them and they're common with like uh, sports bikes that have individual throttle bodies that you can measure airflow. What I like to do is take off the entire linkage off the side of the throttle body and then airflow and set your IAC steps while the engine has no linkage hooked up. The most important thing is to try to even out all three throttle bodies with the same airflow, but more importantly, the front one and the rear one. Uh, if one's gonna be off a little bit, try to make that one the center one. You really want the front and the rear ones to match up pretty good. And then when you get your IAC set up correct, when you go to put your throttle linkage back on, the way that you should have the throttle linkage is a tie bar from the front throttle body to the back throttle body, and then from either the front or the rear connecting to the center. That would be the best way to kind of even out 
all of the linkage points and it keeps everything in unison a little bit better. Um, just short of that, that's kind of the only things that are really particular to a six pack system and a Mopar. But other things to always look out for is look for vacuum leaks right away on initial startups, look for exhaust leaks right away. Um, if you're doing an engine run stand to break in the engine, oxygen sensors read presence of oxygen. So it's so important to make sure that wherever that oxygen sensor is, that there's at least 18 inches of exhaust pipe past where the O2 sensor is to make sure that it's reading accurately. It's usually not a problem in a vehicle. People usually have their exhaust on all the way, but just to bring that up, because if it does read oxygen in the O2 sensor, it's just gonna start flooding the engine. And that's the last thing you want if you're breaking in that engine. Um, other than that, just go through the initial setup, make sure you have everything set up correctly and you should be good to go. Um, that answers all the questions that we got today on this week's Tech Tuesday. Again, if you have any questions, please comment them down below and we'll be sure to answer them for you.